Hello everyone, ClaytonRDTrailer.com. Today we'll be taking a look at and I'll show you how to install the Takancha P3 proportional brake controller for one to four axles on our 2014 Toyota Sienna. This is what our Takancha is gonna look like installed. A lot of people put them over here or even lower down on the dash and it's really easy to bump your knees on them, but we have a really good place to mount it here where it's not gonna get in the way when we're getting in and out of our Sienna. Our brake controller is going to activate the brakes on our trailer whenever we push the brakes in our car. And it is going to be proportional, so however hard we push the brakes in our car, it's going to apply the same amount of braking pressure in our vehicle. And one really nice thing is if you want to override it, you pull this lever here on the bottom and it will override the brakes on the trailer and give more pressure or less pressure depending on how you have it set up. Our brake controller does offer us five pre-settable settings for different trailers because a lot of people always pull different trailers and that's what's really nice about this is we can set it up for any trailer we might be using. Now there are three different boost levels to really get into the aggressive side of the braking depending on if you want more brake pressure or less brake pressure on our trailer. And right here we can set the level of our braking power. It's really responsive but we just have to click up or down if we want to add more power or take some out. And as I said, if you want to manually override it, you pull this lever here on the bottom and you can see the numbers change as I give it more power. We've gone over a lot of the features that the Takancha can offer. Now in terms of getting it installed, it's really not that bad. You just have to run a couple wires into the engine compartment and then make a connection to our brake light switch and to the brake light signal from our seven way. And speaking of installation, I'll show you how to get yours installed now. To start our installation, we're gonna to wanna to remove our underbody panel. There's going to be five Phillips head screws, so we're going to go ahead and take out. After we get those screws removed, we're going to have some push pins that we need to take out. I'm going to use a trim panel tool. You'll just want to follow this back side and pry these out whenever you see them. With our push pins removed, we are gonna have four more Phillips head kind of push pin screws. We can grab our Phillips head screwdriver and remove these now. You kinda of wanna turn down and then pull down on that plug and it'll release. And if they are being challenging like this last one, you might have to reach around the back side and pull it out. Make sure you have a good hold on your lower body panel. Pull it down and we can set it off to the side. To get our ETBC7 installed, we already need a four pole harness wired up. In this case, we have one. So we're gonna grab the plug end with our exposed wire ends. I'm gonna take this cover off and then plug it in to our four way. And you can cut these boots off as well because we're not gonna be needing them. I noticed that our connector is kind of loose. So I'm gonna grab a zip tie and just run it through here and then zip tie the connectors to itself. This will just make sure that that connection does not come undone. I'm gonna take our bracket and slide our wiring through. Just like this. Then I'll come back and put a zip tie around this connector and tape it down. I'm gonna go ahead and mount our bracket up to the bracket coming off of our hitch. You don't have to do this right now, but if you do it now, it'll make it a little bit easier to work with. With our bracket mounted, we can now push the seven way plug up into the bracket. Then our four way has this little notch that fits into the side of our bracket here. So we'll push that in. The hardware for our seven way plug is gonna be provided in our kit. We have a Phillips head screw with a lock washer and a flat washer. We're going to put our screw through here. You might have to move the um, plug around a little bit. And then we can just go ahead, tighten it down on the back side. We're gonna do this for the other three bolts. We grab a Phillips head screwdriver on the front then a 3 8 wrench on the back. You want to go around and tighten all of your hardware the same way. Our ETBC7 is going to come with four exposed wires. Our white wire is going to run for our ground. Our yellow wire is going to go to our reverse light circuit. Our black wire will run to power. 
and our blue wire is going to run through the blue wire on our brake controller. For our application, we're not going to be using this yellow wire, so I'm just going to tape it to our uh, wire loom right here, or I might tuck it back in there just so it's out of the way. We don't have to worry about it. We're now ready to make our wiring connection for our blue and our black wire. Our kit is going to include this um, gray wire here. There's actually a black and a white wire inside. We're going to split this cover and then pull our wires apart. You can now see our black and our white wire. Our black wire is going to connect to the black wire from our ETBC7 and the white wire is going to connect to the blue wire from our ETBC7. This is going to be our brake controller signal and this wire is going to run to power. With our wire stripped back, we can put it into our yellow butt connector, just like so. We can grab our crimpers and crimp down our butt connector onto our wire. It's always a good idea to give a little tug and make sure that that connector is strong. I'm going to repeat that same process for our white wire. Since these connectors aren't heat shrink, I'm going to grab some electrical tape and just run tape around them to ensure a good connection. With our connections made and our butt connectors protected, we can go ahead and make our ground connection here. This is a good point because it's all metal and there's nothing underneath of it as this is an open channel. We can grab our self tapper provided and just run it right here into this brace. Just like that. Now you don't have to do this, but I do think it's a good idea. Since this whole tube is open, I'm gonna drill a little hole in the side here, and then I can run a zip tie through this open hole and through the hole that we drill to tie our wiring up like this and keep it down out of the way off of our underbody panel. I ran our gray wire back this way towards the seven way and then pulled it up over our underbody panel mount and up behind the hitch like this around this back corner. Then I actually pushed it up between our uh, body and our hitch here so it's nice and tight. The friction's gonna hold it there. Then the wire comes up this way and then up and over our exhaust. And it's very important to make sure you stay out of the way of anything hot or moving. It comes up over this, zip tied it to these factory lines. Then up over this cross member and over our fuel tank. And our wire runs over the fuel tank all the way down this way. And then I pulled it out right here in this underbody panel, then pushed it back up and ran it, ran it up over the panel this way. Pulled it out right up here, zip tied it to our AC lines, and then pulled it right here. Now I'm gonna go up top and run an airline tube through our engine compartment down to the bottom and we can get our wire pulled up. Our airline tube came out right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything up now. It's a good idea once you get all this wiring pulled up to go back underneath the car and make sure it's not hung up on anything. We wanna go ahead and cut this sheathing back all the way to right about here and we get that black wire out to make our connection to the battery. When we're splitting this sheathing, there is gonna be a noticeable gap between our wires we just want to take a knife, kind of push down in here softly, and then pull the blade out like this. You want to make sure not to cut the wires on the inside. We now have our wires running up here. I zip tied it right there just to secure it down. Uh, we do have to add a 40 amp circuit breaker, and we want that as close to the battery as possible. When you look down here, there's a nice cross brace that we can mount that circuit breaker to. We're actually going to need to add another circuit breaker just for our brake controller, but I do suggest taking off this battery support just to give us a little bit more room to work. As you can see, we have our circuit breaker mounted right there. Now we can grab our self-tapper provided and mount our circuit breaker permanently. You get the first one in about halfway, then you can turn it back, then tighten the second one down and come back and cinch down that first one. It's pretty hard to see, but we're going to have to use that hole in the firewall back there. I'll shake our airline tube just so you can see where it's at. Again, it is really hard to see. It's the only available hole on our firewall. We just want to take a screwdriver and poke a hole through that. And we can take an airline tube or a string and feed it through the other side. And that'll give us the availability to pull wires in and out for our ETBC7 and brake controller. You can see the airline tube coming out of that grommet. 
you do want to be careful of which side you route it you want to stay to the driver like the far outside of the driver's side to stay away from that steering column we can now tape that white wire that we pulled up from our etbc7 to the airline tube and then get it pulled through the firewall with our white wire pulled in we can now make our connection to our circuit breaker we want to route our black wire around the battery like this then we can pull it down and see where it lands i need to know i know that we need to cut this wire right about here We'll cut the wire, we'll strip it back and add a small ring terminal. When we're looking at the circuit breaker, the auxiliary is going to be our silver post and our battery post is going to be the copper one. But that's what we want it to look like with the ring terminal on the post. Now we can go ahead and add that 3 8 nut. We now want to grab our excess wire, put it to where it's going to be on the circuit breaker and kind of measure to where it's going to land on our battery post. Now we can trim this wire, add a big ring terminal on one side and a small ring terminal on the other. Now ready to add the battery side of our cable to the circuit breaker. We, we don't want to put the other terminal on the battery just yet until we get our brake controller completely hooked up. Again, the battery side of our circuit breaker is going to be copper. With those connections tightened down, we can now move into the inside of our vehicle and make the connection to our brake controller. And we need to find a good spot to mount our brake controller. It's pretty common to mount them in the footwell on the driver's side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put ours here. Now we want, we want it to be straight in line with the car and we want the box to be as level side to side as possible. So we wouldn't wanna mount it like this and we wouldn't wanna mount it like this. With our bracket, if we put the bracket right here on the bottom, we can angle our brake controller like this. It'll sit really nicely. And when we're not using it, we can fold it up or down, depending on who's driving the vehicle. Before we actually mount the box, we need to get our pigtail harness completely wired up. We are gonna have four wires coming off of our pigtail. Our blue wire is gonna run to the blue wire on our uh, seven way in the back. In this case, we extended that with a white wire. Our red wire is going to run to the stoplight switch in the vehicle. Our black wire is going to run to our positive terminal on the battery for power. And our white wire is going to run to the negative terminal on the battery. We are going to have to run some extra wires from outside to inside of the car. Before we run our wires into the vehicle, we want to make sure we have the correct gauge wire. I suggest using 10 gauge wire. It'll still pull all of the current that we need and it'll keep the wires from getting hot. So I'm gonna tape these to our airline tube and then we'll get them pulled through the firewall. You do wanna be careful pulling these through the firewall that you don't pull them off of your airline tube. Our next step is going to be to locate our stoplight switch. If we follow our brake arm up, there is a green connector with some wires. We're gonna push in on the tab on the plug and kind of pull this out. Again, we wanna push down on this plug on the left and pull straight up. Now we can strip back our wire loom. We are gonna be using our blue wire for our stoplight switch. I do suggest using a quick connect. We are going to slide our blue wire into the inside portion of our connector. Now we can grab our red wire from the pigtail harness and slide that into the other side. It is gonna be really hard to work down here. There's not a ton of room but being able to unplug our stoplight switch gives us a lot more room. Like I said, we're gonna take that red wire and slide it into our quick connect. Just like so. Then we can grab a pair of needle nose pliers and clamp down. Now we can add our cover to our connector. This white wire is a wire we ran in from the blue on our ETBC7. We want to connect our blue wire from the pigtail on our brake controller to this. We want to get a good amount of extra wire in here because we can always zip tie and hide it later and then if we have to come back to make any changes there'll be a lot more wire to do that with. So we'll go ahead and cut it and grab our wire strippers and strip that back. Now we want to add a yellow butt connector. And we'll crimp it down. Now we can grab the blue end 
from our ETBC7. Add that to the yellow butt connector as well. And crimp it down. We are now ready to make our black and white connections to our pigtail. It will be white to white and black to black. You can go ahead and trim these back. Then add our yellow butt connectors after we strip back the wires. We can grab our yellow butt connector and crimp it down. Now we can grab the black wire from our pigtail and connect it to that yellow butt connector. We'll crimp that down the same way. Now we are ready to do our white wire. We'll strip that back. Grab the white wire from our pigtail and add it to our butt connector. With all of our connections made, we are now ready to mount our box. This is where we're going to mount our bracket. It's important to check behind this panel on our dash to make sure that there's no wires or anything that our self-tappers could possibly hit. In this case, we're good. We're going to use this bottom line as a level to make sure our bracket is going to be mounted level. Right there should be good. So we're going to grab a little marker. We can grab our self-tapper, put our screw through that slit in the bracket. And we want to get it started nice and slow to make sure it's not going to walk or go anywhere. We'll get that one halfway installed where we can still move the bracket around. Get it nice and centered over our other hole. And we can go ahead and mount our other self-tapper. We can now grab our Phillips head screws provided in our kit and thread them into one side. With one side started, we'll want to reach around to the other side and get it started as well. It is going to be kind of hard to get in on this side and tighten it down, but if you grab one of these small screwdrivers, you can definitely get in there and get it tight. With our last screw tightened down, we can now plug in our pigtail harness and make our connections to our battery. With our connections made underneath our dash, we now need to mount our negative wire to the negative terminal and add a circuit breaker to our power wire. I originally put our first circuit breaker for our ETBC7 in front of our battery, and I did find a little bit better spot located right here. It's still close enough to the battery, but it's going to be a lot easier to mount and work with. Our silver side is going to be our auxiliary, so our wire is going to come to here, and then the copper side is going to go to the battery. We can now put our other self-tapper in the back side. Before I make our connection, I'm actually going to zip tie our wires to this factory harness. It's just going to keep those from moving around and make it easier to work with. I ran our wire behind this reservoir here, and we're going to mark where to cut it. We can trim this off. Then we'll strip it back and add a small ring terminal to connect it to our circuit breaker. With our ring terminal added, you can thread it on to the silver part of our circuit breaker. Again, this is going to go on the auxiliary side. We want to take the excess wire we just cut off, trim it back. We'll add a small ring terminal and connect it to the copper side of our circuit breaker. We can now come back with a 3-8 socket and tighten this down. We can now run our wire over to our battery. We only have to trim off a little bit to make it connect to our terminals. We can grab our wire strippers. We'll strip back this end and add a ring terminal. And before we add this to our terminal, we're going to connect the we're going to connect the negative. I went ahead and added a ring terminal to our negative side. As you can see, it touches right there. This nut actually doesn't come all the way off of our negative terminal. We can make a little cut in our ring here. And then what we're going to do is just slide this over a gap right here. Might have to straighten it back out. Just like that. We can slide this over right here. And then tighten that back down to make our connection. 
We are now ready to make our positive connection on our battery. And we can hook it up and test everything out. We are now getting power to our brake controller so we know that it's good to go. We can clean up our wiring now. We are now ready to reinstall our underbody panel. We are going to have to do some trimming, so we're just going to hold it up into position and kind of make a mental note of where our plug falls. So we're going to, we're going to want to trim out right here, and then we can come back and see how it fits. Before we reinstall our underbody panel, we want to make sure to add some wire loom around this side. And once it gets more up here, we'll just electrical tape it to protect these wires. With our hole cut out for our seven way, we can reinstall our underbody panel in the reverse order that we took it apart. We can now check and see if our plug is giving us all the functions that we need for our trailer. As you can see, our running lights are on now. We can turn those off and we'll turn them back on. Now we can test our brakes. Our left turn and our right turn. With everything hooked up and tested out, we're ready to hit the road. That's going to do it for a look at the Takancha P3 proportional brake controller for one to four axles on our 2014 Toyota Sienna.